Hello, everyone. I'm Dr. Shweta Bansal. I'm a pediatric hematoncologist and bone marrow transplant physician. Today, we are going to talk about sarcomas. Sarcomas are kind of uh, tumors which are found in pediatrics as well as adult population. But we are going to mainly talk about the uh, sarcomas in pediatric population. So why we are talking about pediatric sarcomas today? Because July is a sarcoma awareness month and it is a very important to understand these sarcomas because their management and diagnosis is quite complicated. And if proper treatment is done, they are highly curable. So today my talk, uh, we are going to talk, to talk about to understand what is sarcoma, what are the different types of sarcoma, how we diagnose the sarcoma, what are the signs and symptoms with which a child can present, uh, and how, what investigations are required for it. And then once the investigations are done, then we do the staging workup of these patients and followed by a treatment, because our treatment will depend upon the diagnosis, that is the confirmation of the sarcoma. And then the sec uh, second is staging, in which we'll decide whether the patient is having an early stage or advanced stage tumor. And depending upon that, we decide the treatment. And lastly is targeted and immunotherapy therapies, which are newer treatments coming for the sarcoma management. So sarcomas are mainly uh, uh, arise from the bones and it is a mesenchymal tumor. It arises from the bone as well as from the muscles that is soft tissue of the body. In pediatric population, we have four or five types of common uh, sarcomas. One is the bone tumor in which we have osteosarcoma, Ewing sarcoma and in uh, soft tissue, that is in the uh, muscles, we have rhabdomyosarcoma, then we have synovial sarcoma, and then we have rare tumors also like gastrostromal uh, tumors, and we can have a desmoplastic round cell tumors also. And there are many other types of uh, tumors uh, which are uh, included in sarcoma family, uh, but they are very rare. So uh, childhood sarcomas, though they are considered rare, we commonly see them. They are accounting for approximately 15% of all childhood cancers. And as I said, the commonest, uh, commonest is the osteosarcoma, which is present in the bones of the mainly in young adults and adolescents. Uh, and uh, the incidence rate is around four cases per million of children per year. Similarly, rhabdomyosarcoma is a muscle tumor, which is again seen in the children who are less than five years of age. And the incidence uh, is around 4.5 cases per million. Ewing sarcoma again is a tumor which is found in the bone. So how these uh, tumors basically present? Most importantly, uh, we see these patients, they have a pain in and swelling in that region. So if the child is complaining of a swelling, which is gradually increasing in size, it should be taken care of. It may have or may not have pain. Especially if it is arising from the bone, it can have a lot of pain. But if it is arising from the muscle, it may not be that painful. So any swelling which is of the size of a pea size, then it increases to the orange and then keeps on increasing in size. And the child is becoming listless, is not able to uh, participate in his activities properly. Then we have to uh, look at the swelling and lump carefully and uh, proper investigations should be done. Especially in the case of bone tumors, the patient uh, or the child activities start getting affected. So these pains, swelling, limited range of motions should be taken care of. Many a times what happened, uh, sometimes the child is playing and start get hurt and he develops a fracture over there and uh, then followed by a swelling. Many of times the parent says that it could be because of the uh, injury which the child has incurred during the uh, during the game, uh, during the playing. So it may be because of that, but it could be uh, because the child had already a weakened bone secondary to the tumor over there. And that's why the bone fracture has happened. So it should not be neglected and it should be immediately brought to the notice of the uh, specialist so that a proper uh, investigation and diagnosis can be done uh, because it's very, very important if we want to save the limb 
and the save save child's life a proper investigation and the appropriate management needs to be done immediately or as soon as possible now we are going to talk about how we are going to do the diagnosis of sarcoma so sarcoma diagnosis is not uh, very difficult. We have uh, different modalities, uh, like first doing an X-ray, then followed by CT scan, and then PET CT scan. Many times we are able to diagnose these patients by doing a simple investigations, but sometimes we require more investigations to do a proper diagnosis. So uh, as I said, X-ray of the site is very, very important. It helps in quick decision, especially in cases of bone tumors, because the bone tumors have a very typical uh, presentation on the X-rays. Then we sometimes order the CT scan of the disease site to see if there is any fracture is present or what kind of a tumor is there. And sometimes we also do a CT scan of the chest because most of these tumors, bone tumors or other sarcoma, they spread to the lungs very rapidly and then MRI scan is also ordered to see the extent and the volume of the tumor which is very important again and it also helps us in the uh, deciding about the surgery as well and lastly PET CT scan PET CT scan is a useful modality but uh, may or may not be used in all kinds of sarcomas uh, but it helps in, uh, in doing the staging of the tumor now, uh, once we have uh, uh, figured out that there is a problem and there is a, a patient having some kind of a tumor which may be present in that part of the body, then how we are going to do uh, work, work it up further. So biopsy of that tumor is very, very important. You find any kind of a swelling of the limb, never do fine needle aspiration because that will not give the answer. A proper uh, incisional biopsy or true cut biopsy is very, very important. And it is a very important definitive diagnostic procedure. So if uh, we take a proper biopsy from the proper region, then it can be very, very helpful. And then we send it mostly to an uh, experienced pathologist who can see the tissue and tell us what kind of a tumor is this because our whole treatment will depend upon the type of the tumor which is uh, confirmed by the pathologist. The treatment of bone tumors is quite different from the uh, muscles uh, tumor and again it depends upon the aggressiveness of the tumor also which again is told to us by the pathologist. Hence biopsy is a very important procedure. Again it should be done in an experienced center by an experienced person so that we can get a proper tissue from a proper site and it should not uh, compromise our further surgery also because sometimes we take a biopsy from a wrong side and then uh, later on when we go for the surgery we have to do an extra excision of the skin or of that tissue uh, to take out that uh, a site which has got infiltrated because of the biopsy procedure hence biopsy should be done by a very experienced person now talking about the treatment again uh, as I said, uh, the treatment of the um, sarcomas is multimodality treatment. Uh, it should be done in a hospital where there is an oncologist, where there is a radiation oncology, where there is an experienced surgeon uh, is available so that these people can talk to each other and make a proper plan for the management of the sarcomas. So in the treatment of sarcomas, we have local control and we have a systemic treatment. By local control, we mean that we need to do a local surgery and radiation of the site where the tumor is present. And local treatment is very, very important in sarcoma because even if we give chemotherapy and if the tumor gets completely melted, until unless we remove the tumor from the site by doing a surgery or radiation, most of these times the tumor comes back. Hence, the local control is very important in the treatment of sarcoma. Then, in cases of relapse and refractory tumors, new treatments we are using, which is targeted or immunotherapies. So, in local uh, control, 
first surgery will take. Uh, surgery, the primary goal of the tu uh, surgery is to remove the tumor as much as possible with the healthy tissue, which is known as R0 resection. The margin should be completely ne negative of the tumor, which has been taken out. It's very, very important to prevent the relapse of the tumor. Next is radiation. Again, if there is a, a tumor which cannot be taken out by surgery because if it is present in the pelvic region or in other regions where the uh, surgery could be very morbid, in those cases we give radiation or in certain tumors like Ebene sarcoma, even after the surgery, we try to give radiation to decrease the chances of the recurrence of the tumor. Lastly is the chemotherapy. Chemotherapy is a systemic treatment in which we give, uh, give certain drugs. Uh, the drugs which are used in sarcoma are vincristin, doxorubicin, iphosphamide, uh, carboplatin. All these uh, drugs are used in cases of uh, sarcoma uh, treatment. And um, the major principle of using chemotherapy drugs in sarcoma is to decrease the size of the tumor so that the surgery becomes amenable, so that surgery can be done easily and maximum tumor can be removed. And lastly, if there are any metastases, which are micro metastases in the body, they can be taken care by the chemotherapy. Again, it prevents the recurrence of the tumor as well as the spread of the tumor. Now, coming to the targeted therapies. Uh, targeted therapies are still uh, in clinical trials in pediatric sarcomas. We have not got any major breakthrough, but some of the tumors we are trying to treat by the targeted therapies. <coughs> Sorry. So <coughs> we have imatinib. Uh, we have uh, other uh, pazopanib, we have larotrectinib, and we have checkpoint inhibitors nowadays, which we are we have used as a clinical trial and also in certain patients. Like imatinib, we have used in gastrointestinal stromal tumors in uh, some of the patients with very good results. Then pazopanib, we have not used in adult uh, pediatric population, but in some of the adult population, it has shown good results. Then <coughs> we have... Uh, this uh, larotrectinib, which we have used in infantile uh, fibrosarcomas, and a uh, few patients have shown very good results. So this is how we are using uh, these targeted therapies in selected patients. Uh, so uh, we, it is very important to understand that targeted therapies in pediatric population is... Uh, is still under clinical trials and under research and uh, many research advancements has, has been made but uh, still they are not like standard of care and we are mostly using in refractory so we have discussed about the um, patient uh, investigations about the diagnosis about the staging and the treatment now what are the side effects of these treatment which we are giving to these patients so um, these patients, they have uh, physical disabilities and functional limitations are there because they have to undergo surgery, radiation therapy, they have to undergo limb sparing surgeries or amputations, which leads to the decrease in the mobility, gait and limb function, leading to and requiring a lot of rehabilitation and adapting devices. This also leads to a lot of emotional and psychological challenges in these patients. And uh, we have seen in some of the patients having a cognitive and learning difficulties, especially if they have received radiation, more commonly to the central nervous system. And if the patient has received chemotherapy at a very young age, they also have an impact on the cognitive development and academic achievements. Uh, there is a risk of secondary cancers also uh, in childhood sarcoma patients, and there is a uh, effect on the cardiac and pulmonary functions also. So most importantly, we need to understand that uh, these side effects do, they do occur, but many a times these can be taken care of if the patient is treated well on the protocol and is having a regular follow-up. So proper monitoring of these patients post-treatment, we can actually highlight these issues very early before they become a problematic for the patient and their daily quality of life and can be taken care by the multidisciplinary team. 
So my take home message for these patients is like uh, the childhood sarcomas are various types. Bone tumors are much more common. They are seen in the young adults and adolescents. Proper investigation and confirmation of the diagnosis is very, very important. Staging workup is required to treat appropriately. Sarcomas are curable if protocol-based treatment is delivered by an experienced team. Relapsed sarcomas are difficult to treat and new treatment modalities like immunotherapies are being explored and proper monitoring and follow-up of these patients are very, very important so that they can live their life to the fullest. With this, I would like to thank you for your kind attention and please help us in spreading the awareness about these sarcomas. Thank you very much.